Hello, folks. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone who is present over here in this talk. Thank you so much for joining. Today, we're going to talk about the Fedora Workstation state of gaming. This is something that I have been doing for a while now. Um, it usually started with me writing a couple of uh, articles on the Fedora magazine uh, regarding AAA titles that I used to test. Uh, one was Control, one was Far Cry 5. I used to test them. Please give me a moment. Apologies. Right, so uh, one was Far Cry 5, one was Control, and uh, I used to test them out on Fedora Workstation, see how they used to perform and stuff. And uh, the next thing that I figured out that, well, these perform very well, even far so than the platforms that they were natively written for. The next thing that I did was I gave a talk on the Fedora Linux release party, F36. And uh, that talk was also was appreciated by folks. And gaming was something that is loved by each and every one of us, I like to believe. And this talk is about how we can make that experience of video gaming on Fedora Linux way better. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, before we go on to talk about the things that we would be talking about, I'm accompanied by Anurab Cesar. He will be introducing himself in a moment, but I am Akash Deep Thar. I work for the Red Hat Community Platform Engineering team to work on projects uh, for CentOS, for Fedora. And in the nighttime, I become a vigilante. I go out in the open to work as an objective lead for the websites and apps team. And I represent that objective in the Fedora Council. Now I'm going to pass it over to Anurab to introduce himself. Uh, thank you, Akash. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Onrad. I am a Fedora. I am also a Fedora Mindshare member and representative on the Fedora website and application team. I am also a Fedora KDA SIG member and also doing a packager work in around the Fedora. I am mostly co currently focused on KDA packages and with around the KDA team. I am also having some couple of packages uh, outside of the KDA. I'm trying to maintain them as well. And also welcome again. I hope you're going to enjoy this amazing talk as well. Thank you so much, Anurad. Moving on. Right, so now that you know about the folks who would be making you excited about gaming on Fedora Linux for the next 25 minutes from now, let's talk about the things that we would be covering and the things that we would be talking about. We'll start off with the state that we are in right now. So, you know, this is pretty interesting because we'll get to know about stuff like deep learning super sampling, you know, NVIDIA's upscaling technology, Fidelity FX super resolution, uh, AMD subscaling technology and how these things work well on Fedora 36. Ray tracing, well, we tried that stuff, but we had mixed results, so we probably won't be showing that stuff. But these two things, they're bangers, and Unra will be sharing with them in a moment. The next thing that we would talk about are the projects that help us, well, enjoy all these technologies. Uh, with video games, trying to make sure that the experiences that we have, the frame rates that we have are high, the visuals that we get are breathtaking, and how these things bind together with Fedora Linux and how we can find them in our official repositories. And finally, when we are done with enjoying these things as users, as being gamers, and uh, we have had the best experience possible, we'll now understand how to start with contribution you know, to these projects as well as the distribution that you make use of for gaming. And uh, what are the entry points? How do you get started with doing so? I'm going to pass it over to Anurag right now, and he's going to talk about the state that we are in right now. Over to you. Uh, thanks, everybody. And thank you, Akashdeep. So the situation is right now currently, uh, of course, gaming in Fedora is a lot more improved uh before to today uh if you talk about a little bit of a history we can say that uh if you're gonna play a good game the only solution was in there before was basically you have to use either a windows machine or you have to use wine and you have to be make sure that it works properly you have to do a lot of tweaks a lot of configuration but uh, to be honest with you it's not super easy i understand a lot of people have some problems with it i had it before I can't even talk it for myself. Like I'm a long a Fedora user, and uh, like around like long, long, long time ago. I don't want to say the year, but it is very long time ago. 
before none of the tools was exist, I was trying to configure it uh, just with the wine in order to reach some good gaming. And it was, I have to be honest with you, it was hard. And not only that, configuration AMD GPUs and NVIDIA GPUs was also a challenge in their own respectable way because make it a proper installation, try to install the, uh, the driver uh, provided by the company companies themselves was also not super easy and installation was also hard today we are now so much better in position and also with the community support we have now to proper support on uh, both ends nvidia ends and amd ends amd is open source their drivers completely if you want to play your games you can do that easily with uh with an amd uh, GPU out of the box, in, and we also include it in the Fedora. Uh, when it's come to NVIDIA, you still have to use their driver and install with our, uh, how can I say, um, preferred way we are suggesting to you, recommended way. But in the recent change of events, NVIDIA also opened their drivers. So hopefully, maybe in the future, uh, not decided, maybe it can change. Who knows? But we are wishing that. We can also want to provide out of the box support for both and the other parts as well. So when it's come to the now, let's let's come to the juicy part and some of the fun part. DLSS and NFSR. Well, both of them is an amazing technology. If you have a proper hardware, and the hardware is of course very important because if you have a very old card that doesn't going to give you any result, uh, you have to use. Uh, at least, let's just say, a supported uh, card, then your title, your game uh, will be work hopefully in their support. So, uh, first things first, uh, let's talk about a uh, bit more about uh, FS, uh, an FSR first, then, uh, then the, oh, sorry, an NVIDIA DLSS first, then we would like to talk about an AMD FSR as well. And for a short description, uh, AMD, F AMD and FSR is basically is upscaling the resolution in a better performance. Basically, even if your, uh, let's say your monitor is 4K, but your game is running in 2K and you're upscaling this 2K into the 4K and gain also performance out of it, basically, in a simple way to say it. For NVIDIA DLSS, it's basically AI based on solution to gives you a better performance in a different way, but it is not upscaling. It is a completely different something. It's using not just an upscaling or resolution trick. It's also using uh, make, the, uh, make the pixels and stuff is better and try to make it nicer. So we, we cannot just say it is not just only an upscaling. It also has something different because in addition to that, we have also, uh, we are not going to showcasing it, but I know, and uh, Akash and I was also, I was working on it to know that NVIDIA has their own image upscaling technology. So maybe uh, in the future, we would like to showcase it as well in another talk or in our documentation or in Fedora. So I guess our first uh, showcases was F NVIDIA DLSS, right Akash? Yep. Okay. Let me uh, the next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. 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 Um, so let me uh, do a tiny thing. Tiny. Tiny changes. Then let me take a look into it. Just a moment. Uh, do you want to share your screen on Ralph? Uh, hopefully, yes. I will do. Uh, let me try to do a one changes, and I hope. I can share my screen, hopefully, in a good way. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed, exactly. I'm just waiting for the save. Okay, let me make sure it works fine. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, uh, I think I'm going to share in a different way. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, the way I'm going to share is going to be a little bit of a different. I'm going to use, I upload both of the videos in the YouTube. 
So I oh. published it immediately. I will share it through to YouTube in here. So at least we can share it. Uh, oh, I can share but... a tab. No issues. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, di I did it a different way. So let me try to share the... the... Actually, it would be nice if I sent you the videos and share the tab because if I share the YouTube video, it won't show it in the record. So let's do it this way. Let me send you the links. And at least That's this is the me. fastest solution. That's the fastest solution come to my mind. So let's I found do that. Route. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, this is the FSR link I sent you from privately. And please share that one and showcasing it. Then I can talk about That's it. Right. Sounds good to me. Thank you very much. Cool. So I'll exit the full screen mode real quick. So I'll have to press F11 to do so. And escape key does not work most of the times. Bye bye. Uh, make sure Hi. it's in the HD mode, in the in the highest performance. Also, uh, you can turn off the sound, so we don't need uh, any extra disturbance. Uh, folks, as you can see, um, you can basically see I I, I did both uh, screen sharing. I of course have to cut it to some screen. Uh, the game I used was Rise of the Tomb, uh, the Tomb Raider, and as you can see that. Uh, Without the DLSS, as you can see, uh, the FPS is a little bit lower. And with the DLSS, you can clearly see on the left hand, you, we are gaining a bit more, at the, the, bit more, more performance. Uh, I will share the YouTube links if you want to check it out a bit more carefully what's going on. Uh, you, because you can clearly see that uh, within the video, uh, the, without the DLSS, you will see some, uh, some lagging, some bit of an issues. Some minor problems. I think Akash also can see that we're much more clear in his screen. Uh, I believe. Yes. Uh, also, uh, you can see that in both and I'm losing some of the FPS and gaining it, and you can see some stuttering. Uh, but with the DLSS on, it's all become much more lower. And for for the performance and benchmark sake, I use a very high quality balanced DLSS for testing purposes. I also enable game mode on, so my CPU government, government management is going to be basically on the performance mode the way I wish to see it. And you can see it on the left corner to see game mode is there, and you can see the result pretty much in there. So let me share the, the second video about uh, the NVIDIA, sorry, an AMD FSR, and then we can move on into the next one, hopefully. So let me send you, send you the link in a minute. Uh, hmm. Just a second. Sure thing. You know, one of the things that I noticed was the resource usage was also less when the DLSS was enabled, which essentially means that even lower grade laptops can make use of Fedora Linux and run these games with minimal loss of frame rate and minimal loss of visual quality, which uh, is an interesting thing because some years ago, this thing was only limited to those uh, who had beefier laptops, beefier machines, stuff like that. Uh, exactly. And I also have to say this uh, because uh, there's one more thing I would like to mention it. Uh, when, I, when I do these videos, at least NVIDIA DLSS, my, my department to record it, I have to say I was using also OBS in the behind. It was exceptionally affect my uh, performance. And that's why the FPS count was a bit more lower. I can assure you, without, the, without OBS was out of the way, I was gaining so much more performance, like it was much more double, and temperature was not that super crazy high. So it was much more cooler on my laptop. And of course, depend, it depends on the hardware and depend on the, uh, uh, the laptop, hardware, and media card, or in AMD card, of course, everything is a matter. Uh, manufacturing is also important. So temperature was high, of course, that was obvious. Uh, but I was a, a, at least we can showcasing even this. Try to hit the limits as hard as we can. Uh, you can see the performance actually gaining it with the DLSS. So that was a cool result. So let me exhibit to the MAM the FSR stuff. That was done by uh, Kash Deep's uh, recording. I am sending the video again. Here you go. So you're going to see. Yeah, yeah, I, I have both them both. So we are safe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me open it up. Sure thing. Right, so I'll quickly go on to ATP. 
make it go full screen. Uh, Akash, did you want to talk, you want to talk about what was the difference you seeing much more clearly when we are testing it? Uh, because yep. there, are, there are some situations V and I was observed, and please talk about this a bit more because they are very important. Exactly. So if I were to pause the screen over here, uh, well, I generated this uh, map where we had this elevated map with a lot of structures, with a lot of foliage, hills, stuff like that. And well, that took its toll on the GPU because Minecraft is not a very expensive game to run. But if you have a very big map with a lot of structures, a very long distance, simulation distance set to the absolute maximum, then even the best of the best CPUs are going to break their sweat while rendering stuff. What I did over here was to emulate one of those things. And well, I found a pivot point from which I went across and showed this entire map. So even though you would be able to be having a hard time to see those frame rates, it is 78 over here, it is 89. Unwalk will be sharing these links in the chat section real quick, but the, the difference between frame rates is a huge one. You know, it is almost like 10 to 15%. And in devices which are having discrete laptop, uh, GPUs inside their laptop devices, this thing can cause a night and day difference. And at that place, we know it for a fact that Fedora Linux and other GNU Linux based distributions, these can become optimal platforms for running these games. Exactly. So now that we are done with uh, exhibiting these, let's go back to the presentation. Let's move on. Um, sure thing. So this right here was our test bench. The one that you get to see on the top is Onurab's test bench with Intel as well as uh, an NVIDIA card. Both of us were running Fedora Linux 36, so that is a common ground. And I, my test bench is uh, listed at the bottom, was running this uh, CPU, AMD Ryzen 5900, uh, 5900X and AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT as my GPU. Right. So now that we have seen uh, about the well, the performance in DLSS and the performance in FSR and how they create one hell of a difference when running our games, let's talk about the projects that we would like to contribute to in order to make sure that this experience not just stays the way it is, it improves. So about performance, because well, how good the games can be if they are not performant, if they don't have high frame rates, visuals and stuff. We have projects like Games Mode. It's a daemon created by the ones who create a lot of native uh, ports for Linux games, Fair Interactive. Games Scope, it's a compositor for Steam Deck and DXVK, which is a translation layer for DirectX 9, 10, and 11. The next thing is improving the experience, which is something that is facilitated by Clean with NV for NVIDIA based cards, port control for well, CPU-based applications, because a lot of real-time strategy games, they can be CPU-heavy. And Proton. GPU. Oh, yeah. CPU and GPU both. A lot of calculations, to be honest. And then finally, Lutris, Portals, and Wine Trick. There have been times when we had to be a command line magician to set these things up. But with tools like these, it's just a matter of some few clicks, key taps, and you should be able to have a environment of yours ready for gaming. This thing is important, an experience which is fair for everyone because winning every time can become boring and losing every time can become very frustrating if we have cheaters around. And as much as things were bad until now, well, they're improving. With preliminary yeah. support for battle, I, easy anti-cheat, go ahead and help. Yeah, about this situation, um, uh, you know, some of the games are have anti cheat, which is we it's gonna be hard to run in the Linux. And some of the companies outside of the Steam is also improving it. Some games supporting now uh, anti cheat on the Linux platforms. Uh, I have to able to run a couple of them, but 
uh, depends on the game, of course, depends on the anti-cheat mechanism. And Steam also has an official documentation. I will share the links about anti-cheat. How do you uh, use anti-cheat in a proper way? Then it will not going to complaining about to unable to play your game. So your title may work, may not. So there are some caveats, some warnings. But at least people are aware it, working on it, and they are making improvement. And I mean, at least we are also glad to see that and say that. This situation is improving, and now we have a proper anti-cheat support on certain uh, titles and games as well. Cool. Back to so you. Finally, question. it comes down to monitoring. Thank you so much, Anurag. Diagnosing thing: the games and the performance that these games have is very important. At times, you might have a beefy GPU, but guess what? Your game is not going beyond 30 frames a second, even though the settings are all optimal. In times like these, projects like Mango Herd which is something that was shown in Onura's demonstration in the rise of the Tomb Raider. You know, the craft thingy, the one that showed frame rates, stuff like that. That thing is a really handy thing. Go overlay, it is the thing that is a GUI that helps you manage Mango Herd in as easy way as possible without having to interact with command line and stuff. Yeah, Finally, is very nice. DXVK HUD. Yeah, the DXVK HUD is, well, for the games that run DXVK, as the name says it. And uh, this is something that uh, we get to make use of in a lot of Steam-based games, you know, the ones we make use of in Proton. Finally, now that we have talked about the projects and the ways that they make our lives easy when we are all about video gaming in Fedora Linux, let's talk a bit about how to get started. And this is something that can be best explained by Unraal. Over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So you see a lot of project and a lot of improvement in Linux and in Fedora section, and we are doing all our best to improve these tools. And the tools we show is already exist in Fedora. Of course, upstream project and the RPMs are always require attention and improvement. So if you want to join us in this section and help them in both end and make the games much more possible in, in Fedora Linux, you can, of course, uh, check out the issues testing it, maintain documentation, or writing a code if you know what you're doing it. So let's just uh, say that we always need an extra helping out. That would be amazing if you see us and join us as well. Uh, let's go to the next. <clears throat> and of course, within the project, uh, you can join. When you, when you join us, you, of course, make your introduction and explore which one you would like to do it because Everyone has a different skill set, so that's not change. An interaction, which means you have to talk about the people sometimes to ch check out or testing out. And of course, when you become, you're always a valuable member when you join us. So that's why we say I am Fedora, because everyone is Fedora in this situation. And of course, uh, one of the last thing I would like to say is uh, the Fedora also has a special interesting group called Fedora Gaming SIG. And if you would like to be, be part of it, please. Uh, join them and try to make the games much more possible in the Fedora gaming and help them out, write the documentation, bring the games, bring the RPM, improve the tools. That's very important because we always need an extra help. And gaming is also a very important piece in, in Fedora as well. Uh, we are not just doing engineering or coding. Sometimes you would like to have a fun and, and a family friendly or much more competitive. Uh, that's also uh, one of the uh, important pieces on the operation systems, having some fun. Gaming is one of them. That's very important. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we would like to say thank you so much for uh, joining our talk and listening to us. Uh, we are kind of a little bit of out of time, but we can wiggle extra five minutes to take any questions. So if you want to feel to, if you want to contact us or feel, uh, feel free to reach us on Twitter, or if you want to find, if you want to, Find us in various platforms like Metrics in the Fedora uh, chats. Uh, we are we both find uh, all over the places, so you can find us in the same username. Uh, pretty much closer, and um, so uh, that's pretty much uh, what we have in our end at the moment. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much, and apologies for the inconveniences that you must have had with the late start, as well as well. The videos being played, stuff like that. But we really hope that you enjoyed this talk. And uh, 
it makes you want to be a part of this Fedora gaming stick that Unal mentioned of because, well, we could really use some help over there. Of course. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A section if you have any, and we'd be very glad to answer those. Hmm. Daimar and Susep, they both are really happy of seeing Beach Miracle around. Well, in the context of gaming at least, but yeah, that thing is around. And uh, glad to know that you liked us putting this thing over here. Exactly. Gaming is a beautiful community is always there. Yeah, sure. We like it. And here's the couple of Diego has one question uh, about exploring VR in Fedora. I have not personally oh. done that yet, but I'll ask Onuralp if he has. Have you, Onuralp? Uh, 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 the answer is, let's just say, I don't own an VR device at the moment currently, but I am working one of my friends in my, in my own time. Uh, to say that uh, VR is possible in Fedora, um, but we need to bring some packages. I was working on it closely. So when I bring them all, uh, it will be definitely possible, at least to uh, be able to see it on the Steam uh, with a different, different Linux distribution. So I'm trying to bring them all the same into the Fedora. So the answer is, uh, ex am I explored personally? I am testing it and having some result, but it's not ready for prime time yet. When I publish them all into the RPM, hopefully it will be. I hope that will answer your question. Nekochet has a question about our favorite game. Hmm. I for me, that would be Forza Horizon 5. And that thing runs on Fedora Linux flawlessly, if I may say. And uh, Onuralp, what's yours? I mean, apart from the 4,000 game library that you have, no need to flaunt that. I, I, that I, have, I, I have many. I have many. Oh, I'm going to be go. I, I, let's just say, not one game I cannot say personally. I, I like strategy games like Save Six, or sometimes if I want a little bit of it. But I think my mostly I'm you know, like living in a little bit edge and competitive. So I like MMORPG games. I have a couple of them. A change, hmm. so not just one. Cool. Right, so glad to know, Sandro, that this is some way that you feel like that you should give back to the community with respect to gaming. And I think that we are a little bit too much above the time. Well, time to uh, wrap this thing up. Thank you so much right. for joining, folks. And, uh, well, we'll see you around. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Bye. Bye-bye.